And then, while we were sitting at the tavern, Falcon gave me the opportunity to escape. Where the hell did you come from? Yeah, were you just hiding? I, I kind of went behind the desk, and I, I sat down. I, I didn't know where to go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's continue then. <laughs> Hello everybody out there in YouTube land, Noodle here, and today we're back. Back again, back with Aviary Attorney. I'm so fucking excited, I can't even contain it. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready to go. Yeah, uh, this should be the last chapter, I believe it is, because I think the last uh, the last one was the end of chapter three. Yeah, yeah. All right, so, um, all right, Freya Ramus. Oh man, are these all the same fucking people? Hang on. I feel like they're not all the same people. Just Romulus. Okay, we're missing a few peoples. Uh, I, I don't even remember what our fucking clues were. We don't have jack shit. Uh, <laughs> but we do have 105 francs, which is nice. Okay, let's do this. You can come out now, brother. Oh, God. Wait. Okay, so that's the judge, right? Yeah. It, it, they kind of look the same. It's... It's very racist of you. <laughs> I don't really think that's considered racist. Well, I mean, they are wolves, so... Yeah, well, you know, they're not... <laughs> and you, you're sitting there saying that they all look the same. Well, I, I really don't give a fuck, because, you know, I'm more, like, friendly towards the birds. Um, I feel like I've really gained a rapport with birds. <laughs> that's kind of weird. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit telling of your personality. How so? Well, I don't know. Let, let's just keep reading. I think that you just said some shit, now you don't have an explanation. Noodle, pl please continue. Oh my god, alright, fine. Um, uh, how did it go? Better than we hoped for. The rooster's dead and the madam has tasted her first blood. Heh, <laughs> amazing. Completely worth getting shot for. Oh, he faked his fucking death? What a bitch! <laughs> um... A meddlesome falcon tried to disrupt the execution. Falcon? Really? That tenuous wretch. Don't worry. He floundered and bumbled around hopelessly. The madam thinks that he's of some use, but really, he's as good as dead. This is marvelous. Every piece is falling into place. Our dream will be a reality in no time. To reason, brother. To reason. Act 4-C. Fraternite. Why the fuck is it 4-C? Well, I don't know. Maybe it like splits into three parts at that point. Everybody's quite quiet. I, I bet this is awkward for everybody. I hope you don't harbor too much hate for the madam. I know that the rooster was your friend, but the madam does what she does for the good of France. Oh boy, this is awkward. It is a bit. Perhaps a round of drinks are in order. After this, uh, after all, this is a tavern. What do you two say? Yeah, I think we need some wine after this whole thing. I'll take a wine. Make sure it's a stiff one. Can can you have a stiff wine? Yeah, you never drink wine, Noodle. N no. Well, aren't you fucking cultured? Shut up. I'll take two. Very well. Piero, fetch our guest some drinks. It's your round. My round? No way. It's your turn. Turns don't matter. You still owe me for that omelet I generously paid for last Friday. Yeah, well, you owe me for that coffee on Tuesday. Okay, so that's 30 cents for coffee deducted from 60 cent omelet plus 25 cent peanuts you swipe from my pantry. Hold up. <laughs> I ain't so good at me me mental arithmetic. Listen, Sprouse, you need to go. Go? Yes, I'll create a distraction you head for the back door. Is that such a good idea? If we both stick around, we could both end up dead. Uh, as soon as we rub that lioness the wrong way. If we both run, these two will probably shoot us in the backs. So the way I see it, one of us running is the most viable option. Falcon! Don't argue. Once you're out, find Volteri and tell him what you've seen. Okay! Salt's agreed. You get this round, I owe you two cents. Yep, 
and I'll hold you, and I'll hold you to them two cents. I'll be right back. Don't you move or nothing. He'll hold me for two cents. That Pierre is such a miser. Anyway, I don't feel like sitting in silence. Let's talk to pass the time. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that the top option is going to be the best one. Maybe we should go with some, some cards. Uh, Fontaine, do you want to play some cards while we wait? Some cards? Well, I'm no gambler, but sure, we can have a quick round or something. Great. Have you ever had a Jacques Noir? Jacques Noir? No, but that name sounds dubious. It's fine, I assure you. Deal me in. I'll demonstrate. Oh no! This is that game of 21, isn't it? Yeah, it is! I'm, I'm, I'm going! Goodbye, everybody! No, don't leave me here! Okay, five, six, seven. Um, Noodle, what should I do? I think you should probably hit. Okay. Seven plus five is twelve. Should I hit again? Well, that's kind of dangerous, man. But, uh, yeah, go ahead. Look at that! I lost! So what do you think? I think you just took the rules of blackjack and slapped them awkwardly onto a tarot deck. It's a terrible game. Oh, well how about we play some poker instead? Poker? Is that just poker with tarot cards? I swear to God. Right, about the drinks. One for you, one for me, one for you, and one for... Hey, where's the little one? Little one, he's right. Oh, Mirde, I lost him. You lost him? How'd you lose him? I was gone for like two minutes. I think I dropped the ball on this one. I, I'll, I'll say, the man is going to string us up for sure. Well, actually, we should make up a cover story. We can't let her find out about this. You can't let me find out about what? <laughs> that, that was a really good choice, Noodle. Twiddle D and Twiddle Dumb over there weren't paying attention and let Sparrowson walk away casually. M -m Madam. Uh, we're, we're, we can explain. I swear, I give you two boozos one damn job. Sigh. It doesn't matter. That little bird was dispensable for our plans, but Falcon isn't. What's important is that he's still here. M Madam, if Sparrowson runs to the police, then both this location and Sleeping City are compromised. We should keep this meeting brief. Agreed. Falcon, let me fill you in quickly. Quickly fill you in. As you probably know, we're planning to form a protest, an enormous protest on the 14th of this month. We intend to draw a massive crowd at the Palace de la Cordone, and then we shall march to Tulinary's Garden. A march across Tulinary's? You intend to storm the Louvre? N no, the, the Palais Royal, where the King and the Prime Minister will be residing. I would like to go peacefully, but... Peaceful uprisings have a habit of turning violent, don't they? Exactly. We can't let the leaders of this company escape amidst the chaos. They must be tried for their crimes against the French people. On that note, I want you to lead the prosecution. You want me to prosecute the King of France? The King and the Prime Minister, they're both responsible for the rampant inequality that plagues this country. On the day of the revolution, we'll drag both of the overpaid bureaucrats onto the street and you shall prosecute them then and there. Well, I, I think I understand prosecuting for the pair. The crimes against humanity, I suppose. It could certainly be done. If I were to interview a lot of citizens, gather a lot of evidence, file some paperwork, I could probably prepare a case in about two months. We don't got the luxury of time. Use your ingenuity on the day, just like you did in the catacombs. You, you can't be serious. There's no alternative. The wheels of the revolution are already turning, and the revolution will ignite in under a week. The question on my mind is, what do we do with you until then? You can leave her here with us, man. We'll keep a good eye on him. After seeing the atrocious job you two did guarding the little bird, I think not. I'll just have to guard you myself, Falcon. You shall spend this week at my side while I complete our preparations. Well, I'm at the side of a of a cougar. At your side, all day and night. Absolutely, I'm not going to let you out of my sight for one minute. But that seems a bit excessive. You can trust me, madam. N no, I can't. You promised to help me, but I know that you didn't actually believe in the cause of the Second Republic. If I give you one grain of freedom, you'll undoubtedly free. Flee. That, that's what I thought you said. This meeting is over. Come along, Falcon. Oh, man. We got ourselves in quite the pickle. Yeah, where did... Where did Lily go? Uh, I don't know. Did she just fucking leave? Yeah, well, I... You know, when the game, we told her to flee, and then she actually just left. Well, she better fucking come back. All right, let's see what we got here. We got the, uh, the Tuileries. The Les 
uh, uh, this is the Palais Royale. No longer just real estate. The Palais Royale has become a functional borough gross meeting spot. Okay. Tuileries Garden is a peaceful spot to relax, have a picnic, or plan for a violent uprising. And then Les Halls. Les Halls Market is popular among shoppers, no matter their class or their wealth. Well, well it, we got a cutscene as well. We should probably do that. Yeah, yeah, let, let's do the cutscene. And then, while we were sitting at the tavern, Falcon gave me the opportunity to escape. Where the hell did you come from? Yeah, were you just hiding? I, I kind of went behind the desk and I, I sat down. I, I didn't know where to go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's continue then. He created a distraction. I sneaked away and went straight to the police. They called a meeting and, well, here I am. So, yeah, that's the whole story. I see. So Severin Cocorino died at the hands of the rebels. Yeah, that's right. And Falcon revealed his true colors as a traitor. Uh, traitor? No, 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 that's not right, Inspector. Falcon's not a rebel. He's just playing along so he can save his own life. Don't be so naive, Sparrowson. Put the puzzle pieces together. Falcon unwillingly leapt into the lion's den for a specific purpose of siding with the rebels. He let you escape because he could see that you weren't truly sympathetic to the rebel cause. That doesn't make sense at all. Falcon never shot a rebellious streak. Tell me, Spetterson, what do you know about Falcon's past? Not, not a lot. He's a private person. Has he ever told you what he did during the July Revolution before he changed his name? Before he... No, he hasn't told me anything, really. Spetterson, let me tell you about the man they call Viridi the Viridian Killer. <coughs> Wait, so they think that he's the Viridian Killer? Yeah, you didn't pick that up from the context clues from the last cutscene? Well, actually, it was like two cutscenes ago. Yeah, yeah, technicalities, whatever. I think they pretty much spelled it out. Well, I'm a little behind, you know, memory problems and all. Whatever. Blame your memory. Just like you do everything else. It's laziness. <laughs> Don't say that. All right, so we got to pick some place to go to. Um, violent Uprising. Hmm... Well, the last halls, we could probably find a friendly face there. They could pass along a message, but we don't really have anything to give them. Well, that's true. Should we go to the gardens first? Yeah, gardens picnic. That sounds good. Yeah, I agree. All right, let's go. Hmm. Let me think. So it takes 10 minutes to walk from the Palace de la Cordon to this very spot. And the past world is like five minutes north of here. But the crowd will be fairly large and slow. It may take twice, maybe three times as long to make the move. Having a logistics problem, madam. Perhaps. The plan is to walk the crowd from here to the Tullerese to the Palais Royale. But if we take too long to pass through the Tullerese, the police will trap us in. We could be flanked and slaughtered. Well, that's quite an issue. Hmm. We don't actually want to be helpful. Yeah, that's true. Uh, go around Tullerese, right? Yeah, well, fuck it. We'll just go from the top. Wow, you're just like cussing like a storm like today. Is that... You want to tell me something? No. I'm just trying out something new. I'm trying to sound like a tough guy. Uh, okay, let's just go around the Tullerese. Why not just go around the Tullerese? There's a nice wide main road that leads straight to the palace front door. You can avoid the gardens entirely. Hmm. Monsters across the gardens made for a better political statement, but I can't fault your reasoning. Going around would diminish our chances of being stopped and trapped. I'll pass the idea to Pedro and see what he has to say. He's the one in charge of leading the crowds, after all. <laughs> that bird brain parrot will probably just shoot the idea down right. Probably, but I appreciate your input. I don't know if you genuinely want to help, or you're just telling me what I want to hear out of fear, but thank you, Falcon. It's no problem, madam. For the Second Republic, right? Right, for the Second Republic. That took a whole fucking day? Yeah, we didn't actually learn anything! Good at helping! Well, you know, I'm given the options. Yeah, okay. Uh, so... Less halls? Yeah, maybe we can get some help or something. Less halls, huh? Let me guess. You got a weapon supply somewhere around here. 
Well, maybe this is where you plan on meeting the informant, a government defector. It's as good a meeting spot as any. Actually, I'm here for groceries. You gotta be fucking kidding me. Alright, Carl, the cussing isn't really making you seem like a tough guy. Really? Well, I mean, you always cussing. And you always sound like a tough guy. Do I? I just cuss because I don't really realize that I'm cussing. Well, maybe not. Alright, let, let's continue. There's no need for that look. You think just because I'm a gun toting rebel, I don't need to buy food? Oh, look! Well, well, if it isn't so tender, little gambling, you're growing bigger every time I see you. Madam, you have to hear this. Something big went down here yesterday. A policeman, a nasty, ugly policeman. Let me guess, he was bullying people and revealing secrets on the whereabouts of the revolutionaries. Well, that's how it started, madam. Same old bullying tactics. He was pushing around this old beggar rat who hangs around the market sometimes. But then, when the rat wasn't speaking up, the policeman drew his gun and shot him. The policeman shot the beggar, just like that. Yep. But then the crowd cop went and ran after him. We turned on him. I find this difficult to believe. A policeman wouldn't openly shoot a beggar without just cause. Open your eyes, Falcon. This is a regime of Parisians live under. We are ignored by the government, oppressed by the police, and hanged by the courts. Why do you think I'm fighting so hard to make change? We can't put up with this sort of bullying. No, this can't be right. Something has to be missing from Sante's story. Do you mind if I ask you a couple of questions, madam? Sh sure, ask away. Make it quick, Falcon. Mm, who is the rat? Just who was this beggar rat? I don't really know him well, I'm sure none of us did. He was kind of a loner, hung around asking for scraps of food and cents, didn't even know his name. Well, that's so sad. Didn't he have a family? No means of support? Falcon, do you have any idea how many beggars are on the streets of Paris? How many people go hungry? How many people are forced to turn to crime? Well, I'm well aware, madam. I'm asking these questions to see if there were perhaps some reason why that particular rat was killed. But no, it appears that this was just the loss of one unnamed beggar and rat amongst many. It's tragic. That's it, Monsieur. Oh, that's it, Monsieur. Is there any other way I can help? Yeah, what would he look like? What? I just said that. Well, I didn't get a good look, but... He was tall and ugly and mean looking and, and he had one eye. One eye? Yep, he had one of them pirate patches. There's no way. Ring in the barrels, Falcon? Well, I know a man who fits the description, but it simply couldn't be him. He's a big, he's a bitter individual, but he's mortally righteous. I can't imagine him shooting an innocent person so recklessly. Don't let your bias towards the justice system affect your judgment, Falcon. If you think you know who did this, then please name and share him. I think I should bite my tongue and tell him a little bit more certain. Did you want to know anything else, Monsieur? If a policeman did shoot an innocent person, then there would, there would have surely been an investigation. Ha! Your naivety knows no bounds, Falcon. You think the police care about one of their own is out of control? Actually, there was one bloke asking around, but I don't think he was a policeman. Oh, go on, madam. Well, he was this charming fox. Renard. A friend of yours, Falcon? Something like that. We should probably pay him a visit to see what he's up to. Pay him a visit? I suppose we could set aside a little time. Did you want something else? Well, no, that's all, madam. Thanks for your help. No problem. Anything to help, madam Baromo. We'll try to get to the bottom of this, Sante. Nudie, you're starting to mix up your voices. I know, I know. I only have, like, two female voices. And that's one of them. Just make sure you stay safe when the revolution starts. Stay inside and keep get, get, get it, your little baby daughter safe. Of course, madam. You're safe, you hear? Jesus, you're like butchering the fuck out of this. I know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Let's go see him. Yeah! I feel like I'm not going to have a really big part in this. Visitors, Monsieur. Visitors. Visitors. Really, Falcon, what do you hope to accomplish from this sleazy back alley establishment? Sleazy? Madame, my back alley office is perhaps a little cluttered and eccentric, but I resent the accusation of sleaze. Um, maybe I should do the introductions. Monsieur Volpes, this is Madame Buffett, and um, a friend of mine. Madame, this is 
Reynard Vorbis, private investigator at your service. It is a pleasure to meet you, madam. Ah, how stoic. I'm sure you have some pressing questions to ask, Falcon, but before we get started, is there something I must tell you? Monsieur Sperson dropped by earlier. He informed me of your situation. Sperson, is he all right? Oh, yes. He's not working with Inspector Volteri, attempting to unravel a rebel plot. Yes, that I thought. It appears that your lucky has solidified his position as a traitor to the Second Republic, Falcon. Perhaps, perhaps not. Spitterson doesn't strike me as a person who sides with any ideology. But you know, he asked me the most peculiar question. Would you like to know what it was? Well, of course. Such information is quite valuable. It would cost, say, 30 francs. Well, we do have 100. Yeah, yeah, I know how this works. Here's your money, Monsieur. Very good. So on to the question. Sperson asked if you were the Viridian killer. The one responsible for the random bombings during the July Revolution 18 years ago. Why on earth would he ask that? Perhaps the inspector has been telling him stories. So, would you tell him? The truth, of course. That is, I have no idea who the Viridian killer is, but that I know that it couldn't possibly be Falcon. Oh, well, how do you know that I'm not the Viridian killer? You know, I'm a... Look at my da Look at my eyes! Heh, Falcon, please. You're a semi-drunk, bumbling off, not a ruthless killer. Anyway, I've started my own investigations into the Viridian killer. It's fascinating stuff. Apparently, he was seen in multiple places at once, which leads some to believe that he was actually more than one person. Hmm. And do you know why they call him, or should I say them, the Viridian killer? Viridian is a greenish color, isn't it? No, I don't got a clue. Crimson Killer would be a much cooler name. It appears that no one knows the origins of the name, which leads me to suspect that he, or any they, chose their own name. It's all fascinating, truly fascinating, but perhaps we can return to the conversation as to why we're here? Well, of course. Mojo Vopis, we heard that you were investigating the murder at Les Halls. I was. That victim was a friend of Mousie's. More of a acquaintance, really. Well, we want to know if you managed to uncover anything. Did you find any leads? Any juicy clues? Not as such. It's quite a peculiar case. Did you hear that the murderer wore an eye patch? Well, yes. I know. You know what that implies, don't you, Falcon? You only know of one police officer or indeed one person who wears an eye patch. Well, this seems pretty straightforward, so let's just find his picture. Uh... Uh, where the fuck is he? He's gotta be like on the first page, right? Mm -hmm. nah. Here we go. The inspector. But that can't possibly be right. You wouldn't describe him as a murderous man, would you, Monsieur Vopis? Murderous? Though I don't know. He's certainly passionate about finding the Viridian killer. Who's to say that he wouldn't kill in pursuit of his arch enemy? Falcon, I want to solve this mystery as much as you do, but time is pressing. We have other matters to attend to. We must take our leave. Well understood. Until next time, Monsieur Vopis. Goodbye and good luck, Monsieur Falcon. It was a pleasure meeting you, madam. Um, Monsieur Vopis? That line is like pretty angry. Is, is this revolution going to end in blood, Monsieur Vopis? Just like in 1830? A new day. It's February 13th. It's a Sunday. Hmm. One last place to visit, I suppose. <clears throat> the Palais Royale. Just look at that disgusting den of fat cat burger girls and hypocritical politicians. The king is probably in there as we speak. Probably sitting in a house chair, stuffing his little face with cake and wine while he boasts about being the perfect citizen king. Did you come here just to moan about the king? No, I come to assist the potential battleground. On the day of the rebellion, I might order Pierre to set up a barricade over there. What do you think? There, right outside the Palace Royale. Of course. <laughs> That's not your line. Well, of course it is. Noodle, you, you go right ahead. Of course, it's the perfect place for a defensive garrison. We can gather, we can gather furniture from nearby buildings, build a wall, position rifles to fend off the police. When the time is right, we'll serve the ideal location to launch our assault on the palace. So you weren't just throwing empty words in the tavern. You actually do intent on dragging the king out of the palace through violence. Of course. He'll never abdicate of his own violation. 
That's foolish. It's not as if I want to see bloodshed, Falcon. It's a necessity. It's inevitable. I mean, if we have to be realistic, there's no way to bring about change to a country without using violence, is there? Well, of course there is. I think there are ways. People look back on violent moments in history, the executions, the wars, the blood revolutions. But who's to say that a country could not be overturned through just chance of the people? Pacifist revolution. Interesting. I would love for such a thing to be possible. Maybe. It would be better to avoid building the barricades. At least until it's clear that the violence is inevitable. Well, that's good. That's a good compromise, madam. I think you're slowly talking her down. Yeah, I'm using my, my derelict wild charms to, to bring about a peaceful revolution. Alright, points to arts. Uh, newly built bridge. Oh, this guy again. You think we're gonna run across the fisherman? God! Is, I'm so fucking bored over here! This is it, Falcon. This is the day we make our stand. Everything is coming together as we speak. Fontaine is gathering the protesters at the Palais de la Cordain. Pierre is making the preparation to build an armed barricade near the Palais Royale just as a precaution, you understand. The only question that remains is, are you ready? <laughs> well, yeah, that's the truth, Noodle. To be perfectly honest, no, I'm not ready at all. You want me to prosecute the King and the Prime Minister if, if we need to drag them out from the Palace, right? Well, I got no time to prepare. I got no evidence on hand. This whole trial is going to be one big fiasco. You're too fixated on formalities, Falcon. This revolution will succeed and those in power will see justice. That's all that matters. But, madam. Come on. Let's see how the protests are going. Falcon and Boar Mode arrive at the Palace de Cordon. The air is thick with chants and shouts. Cheers of hundreds of protesters. A line of mounted soldiers stands shoulder to shoulder outside the entrance to Tolieres. This is amazing. I had no idea the Second Republic had this many supporters. But of course, you didn't think we were just going to get a few animals huddling in a cave, did you? The desire for revolution runs deep in the city. Everything's in place in Palace Royale, madam. Just say the word and we'll set up the biggest barricade you'll ever see. Then we can call a storm all the buildings and drag that cocky king out of his chair. There's been a change of plan. We're still going to protest, but we're going to do it peacefully. No firing from behind the barricades. No violence, no capturing the king or prime minister. Madam, are you feeling all right? Oh, quite all right, thank you. But what of your desire for a bit of France? You cannot achieve that without bloodshed. We can certainly try. Falcon can convince me. Falcon? Pacifism seems like the Christian approach, wouldn't you say, Friar? I see, so that's how it is. Excuse me, madam. I think the Friar approves of the new strategy. He probably thinks I've gone soft, and maybe I have. I'm not deviating from this path, even if each and every rebel leaves my side. Don't worry, madam. You aren't alone. Oh, we're not here for the violence, madam. As long as you strive for a better France, we'll always stand with you. Ugh, this stupid bullet wound. The damn thing opened up again. What's the news, brother? Is everything in place? We have a problem. The man was well refuses to use violence. She's turned timid. Turned timid? How? It appears that the lawyer Falcon is something of a lion tamer. JJ Falcon? That bird has proved to be more trouble than a rooster, I swear. Brother, listen. If there's no violence, then there will be no power gap. One leader would just peacefully replace the other. We need chaos for our plan to work. I guess we'll have to follow through with our contingency strategy. I'll find the victim, you find the suspect. Don't push yourself, brother. You're still injured. Oh my god. Look at these scum, the foul vermin, the lot of them. Mark my words, Sperson. Every one of these putative dissenters will take the first opportunity to turn aggressive. They lust for violence. They don't look too violent to me! Thank God I got fucking lines again! Trust me, this is just how the crowd looked before the July Revolution. It only takes one crazed individual and the entire crowd will explode into a frenzy. Hey, it's you! Friar, it's good to see you again. No time for pleasantries, Inspector. You're needed urgently on the Palace de la Concorde. Me? Why not ask one of the officers on active guard duty? There's no time to explain. Any minute now. Ah, do you hear that gunshot? It's already begun. 
Come on, Inspector, we must make haste. Inspector, I don't think you should be trusting this friar. He's a two-faced wolf. Friar, friar Remus has provided me with reliable information in the past. I trust his judgment. But, but Inspector, this is enough for discussion, Sparrowson. I have a duty to uphold. Stay put. I'll be back in no time at all. But, but, what should I do now? <laughs> <laughs>